All right, today we're gonna be installing the swimplatforms.com extended swim platform on our Cobalt 292. So first thing you wanna do, uh, put your outdrive down just to make sure you got plenty of room to work. And there's a decorative panel back here that we already took off. Thanks for holding that, Ari. So that's got to come off first. It's held on by a bunch of Phillips screws. Ari, can you show us where it goes on there? So normally that fills that gap. It's just a decorative cover. It doesn't have any sort of reinforcement or anything. So you want to take the Phillips screws off the back that, that hold it in place. Hi, Aiden. And then you want to take that off. And once you do, you're going to be left with a bunch of holes in the transom and the fiberglass where it was installed. And you want to make sure to fill those holes with uh, either 4200 or 5200 3M. Uh, using the fast dry, if you don't use the fast dry, it's going to start dripping and gooping and come off all over the place. If you don't have any fast dry and uh, you have the regular 4200 or 5200 that does take a, quite a bit of time to set, you want to make sure to put it in there and then put a piece of masking tape over it uh, to avoid having it drip all over the place. So that's the first step. We get this guy off. And then you need to have some sort of a way to support the swim platform and uh, hold it up while you make small adjustments and get it fitted up before you start drilling any holes. So what I'm gonna do is measure from the ground up to about where I think the bottom of this thing is gonna end up and then leave a little bit of space. Right at about, looks like 48 inches, maybe a little bit lower would be a good point for me to um, build a little platform. And in this case, the actual platform, or I'm sorry, the uh, crate that the swim platform came in, it might be just about the right size. So I'm gonna measure that out. Looks like it's yeah, about 49 inches. It might be a little tall, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to flip this guy on its side and put it up against the boat. Have somebody help me put the swim platform on top of there, see if that's about the right height and then still allowing us to make some adjustments. So that's where we're gonna start and then go from there. All right, I cut the top of the box, the, the top of the crate off just a few inches. Uh, I'd say about four inches or so to get the, um, the this little platform here a little bit lower and then we'll have room to shim it up and down and you know, angle and everything to make adjustments when needed. But uh, this is what it's going to look like, for us at least. And then the actual swim platform is going to fit right, right under this guy. So all of the screws and the anchors are going to be right along this area here, all across, and over to this side. Uh, this particular platform doesn't have anything that goes under. I know with our last Cobalt, uh, the swimplatforms.com platform, also had a section that went underneath and anchored upwards from underneath. With this one, all of the uh, mount points are along the back of the transom here. It also has a cutout to go over um, the, uh, the hook here in case you ever need it for anything, towing, etc. cetera. Um, for us, we're not gonna use that anymore for towing tubes and skiers. We never really did just because it was too low. Instead, we put this one up here. All right, so we got the swim platform lined up and measured everywhere. It's centered, it's level everywhere. We put, uh, we drilled two holes. Uh, you see the bolt there. So one on this side, one on the other side, just to hold things in place. Put these uh, two by fours here at the end so we could remove that crate, get ourselves some area to work and drill the rest of the holes. And I, uh, marked and drilled pilot holes for the rest of them there. So I've got six, a total of um, six holes on each side. And I start with a half inch drill bit to get the pilot hole started. And then a three quarter inch drill bit 
which is required for these toggles that this particular swim platform installs with. So these toggles here, you drill the three quarter inch hole, you turn this sideways, push it in there, and then let it pop open. And then this little piece here, this, these are basically zip ties here. So this little piece, you would uh, hold this back and then slide this all the way in, snug it, that way it holds everything in place. And then this would end up on the inside of your hole. This would end up on the outside of your hole, holding it sandwiched together. And then you put your bolt through and tighten things up. Also making sure to put a washer on the outside of your bolt. So before we do any of that, I'm drilling all the holes. Then we're gonna take the swim platform back away from the boat. We're gonna put some 3M5200 sealant in all the holes, make sure we're covering all the bare fiberglass, put the toggles in, then put the swim platform back on, then screw everything snug, then work on the support bars. All right, so our swim platform installation is complete. Um, apologies, I didn't get to take a bunch of video because I had a couple of folks helping me and I didn't want to uh, keep them around all day, but let me walk you through the, the remainder of the steps. So if you look at the bottom, you see all the bolts there across the top. So as I showed you before with the toggles, you wanna drill your three quarter inch hole and then the uh, three eighth inch toggle will slide uh, sideways through that, pop open and then provide support on the back side. And then the little plastic tab, you want to slide uh, over the, the zip tie portion of the toggle to make sure it's nice and snug. And then once that's on there, you want to put some 5200 sealant, about a quarter inch thick at least, uh, around each of the toggles to make sure you have a nice watertight seal. Then get the swim platform back on and positioned and shimmed and everything so it's nice and straight exactly where you want it. And then get it installed. And at that point, um, you should be ready to tighten up all of the toggles. Um, so on our last swim platform, it didn't have toggles. It had the uh, nuts and bolts and washers and plates on the inside and the outside, the, the bolts themselves. And it took a lot longer. This one went a lot faster with the toggles because you didn't need access to the inside of the boat. Uh, on this boat, you can't really access the inside of the transom where, where the mount points are. So the toggles are the only way, but I gotta admit, it is much, much easier. So once those are in, you uh, wanna get your, uh, the, the back end of your swim platform, maybe about a, uh, I would say, um, for me, about a half inch higher than the actual final position, worked real well. And that way it puts the back of the swim platform up a little bit higher and uh, ready for you to put in all the support bars. And then once the, um, uh, everything is, is there and the weight comes on it, it kind of uh, snugs back down to it to where it should be. On this particular swim platform, it has four support bars. I'll show you exactly how and where they go. On our previous swim platform, uh, we had two, uh, two support bars. So it depends on which kind of boat you have, how large the platform is, how much it weighs. But uh, let's walk through that. So each of the support bars comes uh, slightly bent at the end, crushed and bent. And, uh, and weld it off at the end so you don't get water in there. And it's not gonna be a perfect angle. What you need to do is uh, position it where you want it and either put more bend or less bend in each of the ends to get everything to fit flush. And then at the top end, underneath the swim platform, the forwardmost uh, bolt, you use a quarter inch drill bit, drill all the way through. And uh, you wanna use a drill from the bottom upward, very gently, so you don't split any fiberglass. And then you want to countersink the top side. You countersink it so that the uh, angled head Allen bolt fits flush with the surface of the swim platform. Countersink it. And then the uh, rearward one uh, is where the wood screw goes, the stainless steel wood screw. And that one you want to drill through just barely enough uh, for the screw to fit. And you don't want to go all the way through. If you do go through ac accidentally, you'll want to fill the top side uh, with 200 or some kind of sealant so that you don't get water penetration. So after you do that, um, obviously clean out the holes, blow them out, washer on each one. I start with the bolt um, and uh, put some 5200 all the way through the hole, put the Allen bolt in from the top down and snug it up with the uh, lock bolt uh, or lock nut and the washer. 
And then after that one, it's uh, mostly snug, still has a little bit of room for movement. Uh, then put your wood screw in there, uh, snug that one up. Uh, then get, get this one nice and tight. I would go ahead and tighten it at this point and then tighten up your wood screw. Now at this point, you've got your ends bent flush and you've got this side all finished. You're not gonna touch this side anymore. So you're pretty much complete with that side. Then you wanna come down to the bottom and line that up where it needs to be. Mark it with a Sharpie, mark the two holes. And you'll have, as long as these support bars are, you'll have room to move it out of the way and drill your holes. So move the uh, beam out of the, the support bar out of the way, drill your two holes, countersink them so that you don't get any sort of uh, uh, splintering or spider webbing on the gel coat. Then put your 5200 sealant in there and around both of the holes so that it, uh, when it tightens down, squeezes out, creates a nice watertight seal then screw that in and you're you're done there now one more thing to mention um, depending on where your support bars end up usually the two middle ones at least will be very close to your your out drive so before you even install those have somebody hold the support bar in place and both in the down position for your out drive and the up position for your out drive go clock to clock all the way clock to the left all the way clock to the right and make sure you have clearance and you're not gonna to touch your uh, support beam. So I put these in as far as I could go, right uh, right above, I still have about an inch worth of clearance here. This is in the upward most position, so really just for trailering. And uh, that, that way I've got really good support in the middle and then the outside bars give me good support on the outside. Now with this one, this is a pretty wide boat. It's a 292, uh, nine and a half uh, foot beam. So it's wider than your typical eight and a half foot beam boat. So it has the outside support beams as well. And on the outside support beams on this particular hull, uh, as you can see, they, they attach here. Instead of going that direction, attach this direction. So you'll notice that the bends on your, uh, on your support beams are, are also uh, coordinating with, with that direction of installation. And then same here, you wanna put the bolt on the forwardmost point underneath the swim platform, the wood screw on the rearward part, and then the two hex bolts, um, on uh, on the transom portion and then once you get that done that that's all finished um you want to check your your ladder bolts and hardware make sure everything's tight um i always have uh, a habit of double and triple checking everything that comes from the manufacturer just in case on this one everything was tight and i really like uh the ladders that come on these swimplatform.com um platforms when you do order them they're very long almost on a, even on a trailer as high as this boat sits it's almost down to the ground and they have the the double bars here with the pad in the middle so you don't get that skinny bar in the middle that hurts your feet especially with the kids or the heavier folks and they're pretty good quality uh seems like they're 316 stainless or something close and uh they go on little rubber strap there holds it on and they're really solid now with the other factory ladder that came on this boat it's under a little hatch locker uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this lid but I'm gonna remove the factory ladder it's just held down by a few bolts on this side a few on that side so I'm gonna get that removed and uh, and, and patch the holes up and this will be basically storage, just like the other hatch cover there. You can put docking ropes or whatever you want back there. Um, I'll probably throw a couple of ropes in there just, uh, just to be able to have quick, easy access to, to lines to tie off to the dock when needed. But that's uh, the swim platform edition, the uh, extended swim platform edition. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe and uh, happy boating.